What's up, guys? Mr. Wrestling Fanatic back here with another video today. And if you noticed, I do have now slideshow to my advantage now. I have found an app that I can use on my phone, so I'm going to be doing more slideshows. We got the NX, NXT TakeOver, NXT Specials, I should say, because there's one that's not a TakeOver, a rival. I have them all the way up to TakeOver Brooklyn 1 uploaded right now. I'm just going to do all those reviews. Try to get them all out before take over Toronto. I was going to do the Summer Slams, but I don't have time to watch all the Summer Slams. I have watched all the TakeOver specials, well, NXT specials before. That's why I'm doing those. And then I think I'm going to do start watching the Survivor Series later after Summer Slam and after the G1's over. So I can do all the Survivor Series up until 2018. And then reviews 2019s after it happens. And then start doing the Rumbles. And then I've watched all the Manias at a point in time. So I don't really have to do those. And I'll do SummerSlam. So yeah, I'm going to try to do all the big four pay-per-views. Reviews just like guys like Laundrick does and Art does. Great YouTubers. Um, so yeah. But today we're here for the um, G1 Climax Day 8 review. It, I just watched it, just finished. It happened this morning. A little bit, little four-day break, you know. I was getting a little upset. <laughs> I was like, damn, I haven't seen G1 in a couple days. And I remember, oh shit, 24th is tomorrow. It was me yesterday, and it happened. Now we have another three-day break until Saturday, and Saturday looks like a really good card. Osprey and Fale is could actually be a good little guy, big guy match. Evil and Zack Saber Jr. could be really fun. Sonata and Tanahashi, man, I love Tanahashi, but I need Sonata to win here. Personally, I want Sonata to win so bad there. Um, Okada and Kenta and Archer. There's one more guy. I just I always forget one person. <laughs> Who the hell does Archer face? Abushi. How the f hell do I forget Kota Abushi? Alright, never mind that. But we're here for day eight, the G1. Re the last three matches, all really good to great matches. The first two are... Alright, let's talk about them. So the first match was... Juice Robinson and Toriano. You know, it was your normal Yano comedy match. This might have been my favorite out of them all because Yano didn't end up surprising someone here. <laughs> and Juice like played along with it you know the, the, the stuff they're doing was funny the beginning of the match Yano held his hand out to to shake Juice's hand Juice was like no bullshit he was like question him on it extended his hand and of course Yano there was bullshit involved yeah I, I had fun with this match I gave it two and a half stars just cause the comedy factor and Juice did end up winning with the Pulp Friction um, the next match was Tai Chi and Goto. Now you see, I, I just could not get into this at all. Goto, only with certain people, I like his matches. Like Abushi or Ishii, or like Kenny Omega, or Okada. Those are four people I can name off the top. Nakamori had good matches with. Those are people off the top of my head I can name that he... I will like the, that, that match, but like, I don't know, I could never get into his matches with Naito, I talked about that already, and I just couldn't get into this match, and it's not really Goto's fault, I, I cannot get into Tai Chi, unless it's really with a specific person, because I did not like his match with Naito at all, really, I revised my rating on that, I really didn't like it that much, and I gave this match a little three stars, like, Nothing in this aver all around average match. I don't know, just Tai Chi is meh to me. I liked his match with Shingo a lot. That was a great one. His match with Ishii, well, Ishii has a great match with anybody, so his match with Ishii was great, of course. But this match with Goto, I just could not get into it. I'm not a big fan of Tai Chi at all. Really not. I, I would be very interested to see him face Okada, though. I want to see if Okada can drag a good match out of him. And I don't know. I, I don't remember his face Tanahashi, but also I'd like to see him face Tanahashi. See if he can get a good match out of him. 
And probably a Bushi too. Let's see if, what he can do with those three guys. And let's hope he doesn't win against either, any of them. He shouldn't have beat Naito. That's my personal opinion. A lot of people are like, but it's a G1, you know. Random people win all the time. Yeah, but no, fuck it. I don't care. He shouldn't have beat Naito. Just like Yano shouldn't have beat Naito. Yano shouldn't have beat White. Right now it's looking like we're going to see a Moxley win the B-Block. But I definitely think... Here's what I said. If Moxley beats Naito this Sunday, he's winning the block. If Naito beats Moxley, Naito's winning the block. Next we have Shingo and Moxley. This match was awesome. I love this match. The work on Shingo's knee was excellent. Shingo was selling it great. Um, and Moxley was using a different type of offense in this match. Well, yeah, he still used the chairs, he used the table, but he was working over the knee. He used the regal knee a lot, which is the knee trembler. Um, I love that they mentioned that Steven Regal, William Regal, is his mentor, which is which is cool. Um, and he taps Shingo out with the clover leaf. So it looks like he's going to have that as a submission hold now. He did figure fours in this match. Like He, he looked like a... A different type of wrestler, and that sh just showed you how versatile Moxley can be if he wants to, which I like because I wasn't huge on Ambrose in WWE. I liked some of his matches. I really liked him at some points, and then he just there's a lot of times where he'd just be average or a little bit above average, but not as great as people think he was for me personally. But he's looked great ever since leaving WWE. He's really reinvented himself. He looked great against Janela. He looked the match with Ishii was phenomenal. He looked great here against Shingo. I gave this match four and a quarter stars. Awesome, awesome match. The next one, Jay White and Jeff Cobb. This started a little slow, but it picked up really fast. And the suplexes Cobb was throwing here, awesome. Um, the work on Cobb's leg definitely played a factor because he could not hit the tour of the islands because his leg would give out. And that's how Jay White ended up winning his first G1 match this year, which is really weird to say, because I thought Jay White was going to be one of the big players in the block. <clears throat> but yeah, really good match here, and ended up meshing really well. You know, Jeff Cobbs looked really good in the G1, a great opening match with Ishii, a really good match with Juice, a good match with Juice, a good match in Mox. Um, really like this match versus uh, White. I gave this match three and three quarter stars. Really fun match. Um, glad Gato didn't get involved too much. I mean, the brass nuts came in and Gato, but Gato he caught Gato's fist and then had a power slam on him. So I'm glad Gato didn't get much involved too much. There was a ref knock, but you know that didn't end up. I mean, there was a low blow hit, but it didn't end up leading to the loss. So it was like, whatever. So yeah, really good match between the two. And then the main event. Tomohiro Ishii versus Tetsuya Naito. And dude, Ishii is absolutely great, man. Every G1 match he's had this year has been great. Four stars and up. And this was no exception. Because they've had great matches in the past. So it was like, there's no way they're going to have a bad match here. And they did not. Naito looked phenomenal. Just oh, that, that. Oh my God, that, that headbutt into the ch bottom of Naito's chin. That like the headbutt uppercut, I call it, because that's technically what it is. He did it against Moxley too. That shit looks sick. It looks like it hurts a lot because it looked like he really connected up on the chin of Naito. That definitely hurts his head too, no doubt. But yeah. Ishii, every match has been great so far. I gave this one four and a half stars. The crowd was so into it. I was into it. Great stuff. Um, B-Block's next day, they said the matches, and I just wasn't listening. <laughs> so, I, I know we have Naito and Moxley. I know we have Shingo and White. Um, those are two great matches I'm looking forward to. Oh, uh, shit. I don't remember what else we have, to be honest with you. I really, really don't. So yeah, sorry about that. Um, when I review day nine on Saturday, 
I'll have the other B-Block matches written down. But yeah, that was B-Block. That was G1 B-Block Night 8. Great show. Highly recommend watching it. The best B-Block night so far by a good margin. Even though we did have the Moth C she match, which was great. And then we had another match earlier in the night that was really good. But this one had three really good to great matches. And that's why it's the best match. The best night so far, not the best match so far. Um, so yeah, uh, ex keep expecting takeovers to come through. And I just picked up a bunch of like Ring of Honor match compilation sets and PWG bolas, a couple PWG shows and PWG compilation sets. So I'm going to start reviewing those. I've been watching the Brian Danielson World Champion set. I'm on. I'm going to start Disc 2 today. So expect a review on that DVD. Some great stuff there. Love oh, classic Ring of Honor. So this was great for me. But yeah, so expect more um, slideshow reviews to come. So yeah, that was B Block. Night 8 of the G1 Climax. Night 9 is on Saturday. Keep expecting these um, slideshows to come through in the time being. And have a good night.